it really kind of worked itself into our plans. Okay, we need to be sheltering in place and away from everybody right now, but we also still need to make money. How are we gonna do this? As the operations manager for Freya, my story isn't exactly a unique one. You know, there are a lot of people who start off as freelancers for various clients and then end up growing with the client and taking on a more high level role. It doesn't matter your age, if you've been in business for 50 years or five days, a lot of times someone, they might be younger than you, they might be green, they might have your next greatest idea. There's always like an inherent risk factor with hiring someone. You know, you wanna make sure that they're not just a good fit on paper, but they're also a good fit for you. People come and they know they're like, I, I need somebody to start doing this for me, but I don't know, I don't even know how to articulate what I need. So that's the very first step that we recommend for them. Let's get down the tasks that you're doing every day that make you want to pull your hair out. What are the menial tasks that you do that you are like, I wish I could just black out and then all of this is done. That's a great place to start. Welcome back to Mic'd Up. I'm your host, Mike DeChocho, and this is a very special episode for a couple reasons. First, we have an incredible guest on the show. She's a real powerhouse in the freelancing space and is currently serving as the operations manager at Freya. We're going to meet her in just a moment. But before we do that, for the very first time on Mic'd Up, I have an amazing co-host joining me, joining us, and he loved, if he loves this, doing this as much as I do. I anticipate that he's going to be here for a while. Welcome to the show, my new co-host, Dave Ragosa, a.k.a. Ragu. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to uh, to be on and super excited to uh, get kicked off the uh, the first episode, first one. So let's go. Yeah, first one with the co-host. And let's also introduce our incredible guest from Free Up, Brittany Brewer. Welcome to the show. Thank you, guys. I'm super excited Welcome. to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited. This is going to be an awesome conversation for many reasons. We're going to get into it. But uh, Brittany, what I'd like to kick off is kind of the Genesis story. Um, if you can share your journey with us, how you transitioned from working as a freelancer yourself first into your current role as a COO of FreeUp. Yeah, for sure. So um, basically, it sort of started the way that everybody's transition into the freelancing world did um, in the last four years, COVID. Uh, during um, COVID, you know, everybody was starting to work from home. It was becoming a lot more uh, trendy to, to work remote. And it just so happened that right when COVID um, sort of came about, I was um, building with my husband uh, a school bus, a converted school bus that we were going to travel in. So it really kind of worked itself into our plans that, um, okay, we need to be, you know, kind of sheltering in place and away from everybody right now, but we also still need to make money. How are we gonna do this? And also we have this cool school bus that we can kind of live in off grid and, and travel in and just kind of be away from everybody. Um, it sort of all like kind of jumbled together and worked out perfectly. So I'd been kind of training myself um, for years on like writing and learning about SEO, blog writing and things like that. And um, it sort of kind of trickled into me doing um, SEO optimized blogs for people during the pandemic. And I basically was a digital nomad, kind of traveled and worked from home. And uh, just through the um, just sort of natural progression, I ended up doing a, a good job working as a free up freelancer um, and writing blogs and, and doing some SEO stuff uh, for their clients. And an internal position opened up and I applied for it and ended up being a good fit and I've just been growing with the company since. That's awesome. Yeah. I got I have a follow-up question, Mike. Go for it, dude. Brittany is where's a school box bus as is it still active? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um actually the school bus is currently in an RV storage facility um in Florida. Um, my husband and I decided after things kind of calmed down with the pandemic, we wanted to take things international. And believe it or not, uh, crossing the border with a converted school bus isn't as easy as you think it is. So um, we're trying to take the bus down to Mexico. Uh, we did make it across and back one time, but it was a little bit sketchy. So we decided not to do that again. Um, and we put the bus in storage so we could do a little bit of international travel. 
Um, still fully operational, but we're currently looking for a more brick and mortar permanent location for ourselves. So we'll always keep the bus, but for, for you know, here and there trips, but not full timing in it anymore. Yeah, that's awesome. Keep it. That's keep one it of going. the things I, I love about what I do, too, is I can work from anywhere. Right. When people say, well, oh, where's your office? It's like it's wherever we want to meet. That's where my office literally is. I mean, yeah. um, and, you know, so I. We joked, I think it was even before we started recording about St. Pete, and uh, it's a place I'd love to move to. But yeah, I could go to St. Pete. We, I could be hanging out in Jersey. You know, we could be in Buffalo, and you know, you guys come visit me and take you to a Bills game. But it's like wherever that wherever we want to be is where we can be, and that's yeah. a really exciting part about the freelance game. And uh, can you can you share with us how Free Up kind of got your attention? Like, how did they stand out in the freelance? game for you like you obviously wanted to pursue them and then you became the coo what about them stood out yeah um as the operations manager for free up um you know i my my story isn't exactly a unique one you know there are a lot of people who start off as freelancers for various clients and then end up growing with the client and taking on a more um you know high level role what drew me to free up specifically is, you know, some of the other um, platforms out there for hi for hiring freelancers, like, you know, there's Upwork, there's Fiverr, there's so many platforms nowadays. Um, but they're very, um, they're super competitive in the sense that there's a ton of freelancers onboarded into the platform and they really do kind of just let anybody on there. So if you see a job that you're like, hey, I'd be a great fit for this a lot of times you're competing with 75 other people and the person who's trying to hire has to go through 75 different resumes and applications. So it just slows down the process and free up uh, vets all of the freelancers. So I knew that I had the experience to apply. I knew that I would get a one-on-one -on -one interview with free up and they really pushed for more quality um, over quantity. So I knew that, you know, if I wanted to work for a job, I'd maybe be competing with two to seven other people, not 75 to get a job. And I needed something like that, that was going to be steady and that would help me, you know, know where my next paycheck was coming from, so to yeah. speak, during the pandemic. You know, I didn't want to have to be constantly fighting an uphill battle just to get connected with someone. Can you share a couple of the things that identifiers that would, in the vetting process, like what would eliminate somebody or make somebody a good candidate for free up? So freelancers tuning in right now might be like, oh, this makes sense, or, or I understand what's going on if I didn't get into the platform. Yeah, for sure. So um, the freelancers that apply for free, they've got to have um, at least three years of experience to be considered. And then um, also the freelancers on the platform have to go through a one-on-one -on -one interview with a member of our team just to kind of make sure that they're a good fit um, for our best practices in terms of use, which that's another thing. Um, there's a test that they have to approve. So some other platforms, you know, you want to work as a freelancer, cool, let you write in. But with free up, there's actually, you know, a test that they have to take to kind of make sure that they are aligned with the values of the company. And then um, just kind of periodically throughout the experience and time on the platform, the freelancers should be, you know, expecting to be audited. We're always making sure that they're upholding our best practices, that clients are happy, that everything is running the way that our um, our image would like it to be run. So we're always kind of just checking in with everybody um, throughout their duration of the platform. So if that's something that, you know, people are comfortable with, then 100% apply for FreeF. But if, you know, somebody is maybe new to freelancing and just kind of looking to get their feet wet, Free up's not really the place to do that. We really look for people who have experience in the game. Yeah. Well, not yet. Just as long as they continue with it, then they can get on your platform. That's right. I want to circle back, Mike, with one thing. And, and Brittany, is you said it earlier, because um, I was on the other side, right? So I was hiring uh, freelancers. And you are correct. when It's a little overwhelming when you're on there and you're looking for whatever it may be. Um, to look at that list and say, which out of these top 50, top 20 oh, yeah. are qualified? And you're messaging back and forth, but you really don't know, right? And you are, I would suspect you are relying on the company to, to your point, to vet them out and say, all right, you know, we're giving you the top five, top 10. So it, it's awesome to hear that you guys are doing that because I think that's a huge opportunity. Yeah, for sure. I mean, whether you're working in, you know, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and hiring Debbie, who works down the street to do your marketing for you, and she's coming in office every day, or you're hiring someone from, you know, Manila, Philippines, there's always like 
an inherent risk factor with hiring someone. You know, you want to make sure that they're not just a good fit on paper, but they're also a good fit for you um, just within your company. You know, you want to make sure that it's a it's a good fit and everything kind of gels together. So we want to take the initial pressure off of the clients by doing that pre-vetting because most of our clients are busy entrepreneurs. They don't have the time to really go through all the identity verification, fraud verification, and then also set up to see if this is going to be a good fit organically for our business. So by taking that, you know, first half uh, off of their plate, it kind of lets them focus a little bit more on um, just like the personal side of things when they start to get connected with someone. For sure. For sure. So, so Brett, I have, I have a question is, you know, talked about entrepreneurs, right? So what are, what are a couple of key strategies or initiatives that, you, that you can contribute or that, um, that have contributed to free up success and growth? Yeah. So I think that the number one thing um, that we try to do is treat all of our clients with empathy. There is no one size fits all like cookie cutter response for what do I hire for? What do I do? You know, everybody is, um, you know, even if you have 10 clients that are all in e-commerce, each one of them has unique business needs. Each one of them is at a different place within their, um, within the scale of their business. Some people have experience coming in, working with freelancers, other people, you know, they're right there. They're either going to scale or fail and they need a little bit more handholding to get them started. So, um, we try to do everything we can to treat our clients with empathy. We want to get them on a, a call, whether it's a zoom call or a phone call, hear their story, hear their pain points, and then offer them direction, not just say, okay, here you go. Here's a freelancer. Good luck. We want to see the client holistically and just give them the opportunity to share what their goals are share where their current pain points are, and then offer them a solution, not just kind of throw them out there and say, here yeah. you go, good luck. Hope for the best, yeah. right? Yep. You know, and I'm chomping you, at the bit over here. Go ahead, go ahead, Dave. I, I have some sorry, one, one follow-up. Yeah. If you if yeah. you could, so from, from a, uh, I call it a nugget, from a nugget perspective, right, in two sides, if I'm the freelancer, right, what's, what's one thing I could do today that say, hey, I've been freelancing, I'm thinking about coming to, to freed up, it, What's one nugget you can give them to say, hey, make this is how you should make the evaluation. And then on the flip side is that entrepreneur, entrepreneur right? If I'm thinking about it, what, what's one nugget to make, have them make a good decision or not? Yeah. So the freelancers, the first step that they're going to have is um, we immediately right off the bat have them, uh, we give them our terms of use and our best practices that, for them to review. And then if they pass that test, we'll give them a test following their um, review of that. If they pass that test, they're going to get an interview with a member of our team. So the first step there would be really preparing and studying up on who we are at FreeUp and, and what we do so that you can pass that test. And then once they get into the interview, if that goes well for them, we have we help them with everything. It's not just about the clients. It is about the freelancers, too. We help them uh, craft a profile so that, you know, the clients who see their um that they've been paired with this freelancer know, okay, wow, this is all of their experience. There's some examples of their past uh, work references. So we want to make them like enticing to the client. We want them to be hired. So we don't, uh, the same way we work with the clients closely and empathetically, we do the same thing for the freelancer. So just being prepared to crush that initial interview and, and crush the test, that's the best thing they can do to get prepared. And then from a client's perspective, um, just, you know, if you're, if you're confused about anything and you haven't ever worked with anyone, we offer free consultations for every client. So getting on a call with someone at free up, we can, like I said, work, work through your pain points, have a discussion about what's going on in the business and just taking the help. A lot of entrepreneurs want to shoulder everything. Um, they asking for help or getting help, uh, is not something that they're really good at. They want to take everything on, but taking the help from free up. Um, that's some really good, a good nugget of advice that I can give to our new clients. That's awesome. So I'm chomping at the bit over here as an entrepreneur and a, a podcast agency owner. So we're looking to scale. Um, I've scaled this. The, the original team was me, myself and I, right? That's how it all started back in 2017. And then from there I brought on an intern and then it was another audio editor, video editor, audio editor, I have a, a project manager. And I actually recently hired three people off of this company. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's called Free Up. And that's actually funny enough, Brittany, <laughs> you came to me like a week after I did that. So it was meant to be. Um, and what my question is, is obviously hiring someone off of Free Up, it's a great experience. I'll speak for myself. 
I've used some of the other sites for like smaller projects and, you know, someone does the job and then there's no relationship. They're gone or they did it. You know, it's a one-off situation. What I liked about free up is it was more relationship and vetted, like you said, and, um, the people I was working with were more professional. They showed up on time to the meetings. It was just a really good experience. But now that I have people coming on board, freelancers from FreeUp, what I'd like you to share with me is what are some best practices to make sure you do the you know the right steps to scale your business? Because it's not just you hire people and then tomorrow now all of a sudden you're ready to scale. There's pro there's a process behind it, and I know there's a lot of people that can benefit from hearing the different strategies or uh, the process behind that. Yeah, for sure. Um, this is like a huge pain point for anybody, whether when you're in business, whether you are hiring a freelancer or hiring someone um, to work in office, it's just from a management perspective, people might be incredible at, at podcasting. They might be awesome with e-commerce, but when it comes to managing people and actually being able to delegate tasks, F minus. So, you know, people come and they know they're like, I, I need somebody to start doing this for me, but I don't know, I don't even know how to articulate what I need. So that's the very first step that we recommend for them is to let's get down the tasks that you're doing every day that make you want to pull your hair out. What are the menial tasks that you do that you are like, I wish I could just black out and then all of this is done. That's a great place to start. And more often than not, those tasks are actually not as daunting as you think they are. They're actually really easy to outsource. So I like to tell people to get grassroots. Don't get off your computer for a minute. Just go quiet space, grab a pen and paper and write down five things that you really wish you didn't have to take care of. And probably one person can handle all of that for you. Um, it, you know, and it just depends on, on the business too. You know, sometimes the tasks are a little bit more challenging. Like maybe somebody's already outsourced those menial tasks and now they're at the point where, uh, yeah, I just can't do the video editing anymore. I've got, you know, 12 podcasts that I need to, to cut up. And I also have to be filming my podcast with new people. I also have a family and I'm trying to enjoy my life. So, you know, those are the kind of things that we t we talk through with the client to see um, what's the most important thing. What are you ready to, to scale for? And then we can kind of go from there. But just getting it down on paper is a great first step. And then from there, we can start putting it into motion how to delegate that to a freelancer, whether that's, you know, us helping you create a scope of work or a standard operating procedure. Um, that's sort of the uh, trajectory that it would go after after you decide that you need help. Mic drop moment right there. That is a huge thing, guys. Don't overlook it because I'm experiencing this firsthand myself. And that whole get out of get off the computer, grab your notebook, and kind of do some mindful, deep thinking. And the other important thing you said that I don't want people to overlook is outline the specific tasks at a high level because you're gonna get out of it what you put into it. And if somebody doesn't understand what they're doing at a high level. I say high level, it could be literally sending an email. Like if they don't know what they, that you want included in the email, you just yeah. tell someone, send an email at the end of the day with a recap. They're like, I don't know what you want included in that, right? So like you said, that specific outline is what has helped me actually do that. I'm glad you brought that up because it was something I'm like, oh, I am doing that cool, you know? So awesome. Yeah, you want to set the freelancers up for success because, you know, it, it, they've got the skills to do it. But more often than not, you know, you're kind of having them take over your job, like they're replacing you. A lot of times they're con connecting with clients or speaking in your voice, or maybe it's a podcast, they're editing a video. You want them to do it the exact same way that you would do it, um, just freeing up your time. So a lot of times we'll have a client uh, download Loom, which allows you to screen yeah. record and we'll say, hey, take 20 minutes, which you're already going to do anyways for this specific task and record yourself doing it so that we can share this as a standard operating procedure to the freelancer. They can watch it, spend 20 minutes understanding what you want done exactly and have a reference for in the future if they need a reminder and your SOP is created. You don't have to type anything. So, you know, there's there's ways that you can, um, you know, take a little bit of time up front to alleviate stress and pressure from you down the line. Yeah, Loom has been a great tool for sure. Yeah, I was going to say that I, I would say from an experience perspective, and I've always said this, what you put in in the beginning is what you're going to get out in the end, right? So I've I've done it the wrong way and, and I think I've done it the right way. And the right way is, to your point, kind of building those templates, spending the time with the freelancer in the beginning saying, hey, this is how I speak. This is 
my response time, right? Those little, little nuggets, um, yeah. just simply with an email. So you, if you have a freelancer that's responding to your emails, what is your cadence? Like, Hey, I respond at 7 AM and 7 PM, or it's a 24 hour turnaround time. Like just those little things to your point, Brittany, where, you know, they, they take for granted where it's like, Hey, just respond to my emails. All right. What does that mean? Right. Like really dig into it in the beginning, I think will help you, um, in the long run for sure, you know, as, as an entrepreneur. So I think that that's, that's huge. Yeah, for sure. Um, sorry, sorry, Mike, go ahead. No, no. I'd love to hear your follow-up on that. Yeah. I think too, like, um, you know, there are people who, uh, are just getting started with scaling and they're, they're getting people who are, um, really just kind of task, uh, handling tasks. So me as the client, I'm delegating and they're just doing, but there's another brand of freelancer that's available too. And that's the, the A players, the people who are bringing something to the table. So with people, especially who've been working with freelancers for a long time or have higher level projects, um, it might be things that you've never thought of, or maybe you've been doing something one way for two years, but you have a freelancer who's been in this industry for 10 plus years and they come to you and they say, Mike, I know that you've been doing this this way, but I think your business would improve and your time would improve if you started doing it this way. And that happens a lot more frequently um, on our platform than a lot of people realize is that the freelancers bring something to the table and they can help um, improve the business overall. So um, just getting in touch with someone on that higher level and kind of having them like bounce ideas off of you, uh, that gets the wheel turning for a lot of clients. And they might come to us and think, okay, I just need a basic virtual assistant. And that virtual assistant ends up growing into something different and becoming you know, a marketing manager for them or um, a project manager. There's, it's, it's sort of a natural evolution uh, that we see for people who work with freelancers long-term. Yeah, I think that's a great point. It's something I want to encourage. It doesn't matter your age, if you've been in business for 50 years or five days, a lot of times someone, they might be younger than you, they might be green, they might have your next greatest idea. Yeah. That they just say something, hey, did you ever think about doing it that way? And that could flip the whole way that that business operates because of one little nugget, as Dave likes to say it, one little nugget of, or an idea. And a lot of times I do feel like from my business experience before uh, running the company, but just working more W2 positions over the years, a lot of that wasn't um, invited, you know, wasn't welcomed. Like, oh yeah, we're going to hear from, you know, Johnny who just started two days ago. But um, some, you know, and, and a lot of times I was Johnny. I, I was like, man, everybody's saying this, we got the, we got the standard operating procedures. They want you to do everything by the book. And every once in a while, it's like, but why? I'd like to ask, you know, I just want to know and understand why why we do it that way. Uh, but you know, a lot of times if you're brand new, they don't want to explain the why to the new guy so or new gal. But that's a really good point is utilize the talents of the person way more than what it might say in that computer screen that Sally is a web web designer. But, you know, she might have some really cool uh, insights on on something else completely different. Yeah, a hundred percent. One of our um, one of our top clients. He's been with us since the very beginning. He's in um, uh, he's ecom. Um, he does uh, sporting goods. And the one of the very first freelancers he ever hired, it was somebody to do general VA work. The job description and job re the job request couldn't have been more basic. It was, I need somebody to manage my calendar and send emails every now and again. Now this person, um, she's been with them for the last uh, six plus years. She's sitting in on VP meetings with this with this guy. Um, she's grown awesome. and evolved awesome. in her role so much that he's asking her. He's the 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 owner of the business. He's asking her, "Hey, um, should we be doing this this way? Hey, uh, can you hop on this meeting with me um, and this client here? Like she's running his whole show and she's made his life so much easier, um, which is incredible. You know, he he has nothing but positive things to say yeah. about her. Um, but again, it just started off with a basic. I need somebody as a virtual assistant to help me a couple of days a week. And now she's basically running the show. Yeah. That's awesome. Brittany, are there any particular industries that freelancing seems to do really well in? Uh, you know, we talked about podcasting or an agency model. I know e-commerce you mentioned, um, you know, before we did the interview, I was doing some research and e-commerce was men mentioned. Any others come to mind? Yeah, for sure. Um, definitely. We have a lot of podcasters on uh, FreeUp. Um, the freelance, the it's it's a very easy job to outsource for in the sense that it's pretty clear with most people what needs to be done. Um, 
the other jobs are definitely going to be e-com or we're super e-com heavy but also um especially recently a lot more marketing has been coming through and that's a fairly um common role for our freelancers to have experience in. whether it's you know them having experience with things like canva or active campaign you know doing doing email campaigns or doing social media marketing um it's something that we've seen trending a lot and then also with how everything's been going with ai recently um, a lot of clients are wanting to utilize AI in their marketing strategies, but they need a human element to kind of oversee it. So we've been seeing a lot, um, a lot more requests coming through for things like that. That's cool. Just staying on AI for a second, are, are, are you guys looking at that? Is that something that's in your wheelhouse that you're going to incorporate into your business? Yeah, we actually, so we are free up, right? But we are, um, NextNet Media is our, our mother company and we've got several other brands like The Hoth. Um, and then we also have iWriter and Copymatic. Both of those um, utilize AI. So Copymatic is sort of in vain of ChatGPT. Um, a lot of our freelancers on the platform um, are also uh, familiar with Copymatic and utilize Copymatic, which is our sister company for you know use, making marketing campaigns or doing um, SEO optimized blog content for our clients. So utilize um, our sister companies for that. So it's definitely something that we are aware of. We have our hands in um, the, you know, I'm not sure if you guys know or your listeners know about the Google update that just recently happened, but um, you know, there's a lot changing rapidly with AI. And at first everyone kind of thought, why have I been paying my freelancer to write blogs for me? Now I know I can just go to chat GPT and type a couple of things and boom, I have a thousand word article. But that's not really not the so way easy. that, uh, yeah, not really the way that things work. So um, it's ever evolving. Our freelancers try to stay on top of the game. We try to stay on top of it and make sure that we're providing good feedback for everybody and, and also making sure that if they are getting content, um, that it's valuable and not just kind of throwing things out into the, into the universe and hoping for the best. Podcasting is a great way to engage with your audience and stay consistently relevant. The only problem is you don't have the time or desire to produce your own show. You simply want it done for you. And that's where Social Chameleon comes in. All you need to do is press record and upload the files. We'll handle the rest. From planning, production, post-production, distribution, and digital marketing, we have you covered. We realize that times are tough and funds are tight. And Social Chameleon believes in building supportive business relationships. By clicking on the link in this promo, we'll provide you seven free podcasting tips to get started, as well as a free 30-minute online consultation. This is the perfect opportunity for entrepreneurs, keynote speakers, industry experts, influencers, and anybody who has a personal brand. With Social Chameleon, we help you build a brand that is out of this world. We're ready and waiting. So what are you waiting for? Click on the link to get started today. Hey guys, it's Mike. I'd like to give a proper shout out to Navigator Bookkeeping. Look, for a long time, I ran my business without really understanding the full financial picture. I used my gut and my bank account balance to make decisions, which led to some poor choices and constant stress over my business's finances. I knew something needed to change. At the beginning of 2021, I made a decision that helped pave a more clear path for my business. I started working with Navigator Bookkeeping. Since then, my bookkeeping has been handled for me. I now understand the full financial story of my business, making important financial decisions much easier now, and it helps me plan for where my business is going. I highly recommend giving Navigator Bookkeeping an opportunity to help your business. Check them out at navigatingyourbooks.com. Again, that's navigatingyourbooks.com. It's time to know the full financial story of your business. So speaking about your, your clients and, and your freelancers, how do you navigate, right? How do you balance the needs of both client and the freelancer to have a ecosystem, a healthy ecosystem for both sides, right? How, how, do you, how would you do that? And the reason why I asked that question is, you know, I, sh you know, I would say that you know, as a client, I struggled with freelancing and setting up expectations like we spoke about earlier, right? My first few times about that just it became difficult until I realized, hey, I need to kind of build my culture. You said it a little earlier too, it's kind of, it's not just the work that needs to be done. It's what's, what's the culture in the, in the company that you have? Yeah. Well, the first thing is, um, you know, we try to be as fair as possible to everybody. At the end of the day, um, 
the nuts and bolts of the business. We're a mediator. We connect people um, who are looking for work with people who need um, to hire. So we we operate sort of as a middleman there. But what what we can do, um, the sort of the selling point for free up is that we look at both the client and the freelancers as the lifeblood of the business. We try to treat everything equally. Like for example, you know, hiccups are gonna happen. Sometimes uh, quality of work may not be exactly what the client would like it to be, or maybe, you know, something didn't get finished on time, whatever the issue might be. Uh, we have a support team that's operational 24 seven. So if a client were to have an issue, um, we would hear the client side of things. We ask for documentation if it's applicable, but we do the same for the freelancer. We try to look at both sides of everything, do an internal investigation. We can offer support to the client if we needed to do like a refund or get them some credits to the account. And then if a uh, freelancer were to report something, you know, this doesn't happen very often because of our vetting process, but if a client were to be, um, you know, they weren't able to work with the freelancer, whether it was a difference in culture culture, or just disagreements during the project, um, we can make it so that that freelancer is no longer matched with that client in the future. Um, and we just try to do that, um, you know, on, a, on an as needed basis. So we want to be fair to everybody. We want to always hear both sides of everything and then just make sure that all parties concerned know that we've got 24 hour support and we're here for them. Just a follow up. Brett is is how do you how do you nurture that right so that partnership between the freelancer and the entrepreneur or the the client right are you as an example are you guys doing um, monthly or quarterly kind of uh, meetups with them and saying hey how's the how's the how's the uh, work coming is it up to your standards are you reaching out to the freelancer saying hey are we giving you enough work are you kind of excited to kind of do the work you're doing what does that look like that ecosystem for you guys. Yeah, so the the clients are uh, responsible for you know connecting with the freelancers for managing their freelancers. But on our side, we are always reaching out to our clients for communication. We want to constantly get feedback from them. Um, we have a phone team that's dedicated to doing outreach. Uh, we're not just sending emails. We're actually calling our clients and following up with them um, on a monthly basis to see how things are going, encouraging them to report to us if there's anything amiss or to give us like you know, sometimes positive feedback or, you know, anything like that, we're, we're reaching out to them. Um, for our freelancers, we have a super strong freelance community. Um, we have a Slack channel that's for all of our freelancers where they can share concerns, um, share any questions that they might have. We have a freelancer newsletter that we send out every Friday to kind of keep the freelancers um, in touch with what's going on with the business and give them tips for, you know, connecting with clients. And then what's also cool about FreeUp is that all of our uh, clients have an account manager. So if they ever had um, any questions, comments, concerns, or maybe the client didn't have time to put a job request in, they can connect with their account manager directly and the account manager can put a request in, they can reach out to the freelancers. And the same goes for the freelancers too. The freelancers have what we call a partner that they can reach out to um, directly. So we try to make sure that there's multiple touch points, multiple ways for clients and freelancers to communicate with us. So it's, you know, easiest for them, whether it's an email, a text, um, or just on the Slack channel, there's multiple ways for them to get in touch. That's awesome. This whole conversation is about freelancing, but the idea of adding a freelancer to a business is to increase productivity. That's really what you're trying to solve. And so for that reason, I'm gonna mention Magic Mind right here, hold up to the camera. Are you guys familiar with Magic Mind? No, but it looks cool. No. Dave, have you heard of this yet? You probably heard of it because I've been pitching it on Mic'd Up for the last couple <laughs> episodes, but have you had it yet? I have now. All right. So Magic Mind, it's a product productivity elixir, right? So it's the size of a shot. And what's awesome about it is it does it, it boosts your energy, gives you more focus, more productivity during the day, but it doesn't give you the jitters of coffee. So I used to be a coffee drinker like crazy, four or five cups a day. Now I don't drink coffee at all. Have this in the morning. You can take one. I usually take one in the morning, afternoon, like right now. I can have a second one, but most people only drink one of them. Um, and I, I love this. Do more, stress less, magic mind. So you guys, if you're tuning in right now and you're interested in trying it out, go to the show notes or the description, and I actually have a 20% off discount for you. So click on the link, type in Miked Up 20, M-I-K-E-D, Up 20, and you'll get to try it for 20% off. So magic mind. 
But there's our, our uh, pitch. Um, Dave, did you have any follow-ups on, on what uh, Brittany was saying there? Any other, anything else? That was awesome. Could... She, she crushed it. Yeah. This is really good. Brittany, is there anything um, that you feel you were like really jazzed up when you were jumping on the call today with us that you wanted to get out that maybe we wouldn't have thought of? You know, something that's, whether it's free up based or just a, something for the audience that you, you want them to walk away with? Yeah, for sure. Um, so there's a couple of things. The first one's going to be um, if they are interested in more of a hands-off approach, we have a managed service too at FreeUp. So it's not just the clients needing to manage their own freelancers, hire their own freelancers. We've got a managed service too that supplies our clients with a, uh, with a project manager who can hire the freelancers for them, uh, manage KPIs and deliverable all for a fixed monthly price. So for somebody who wants something more holistic and to just kind of take a little bit more pressure off, that's a great option for them. And then the second thing is going to be um, sort of what we touched on um, in the beginning. Entrepreneurs more often than not are afraid to ask for help or maybe don't know how. They like to shoulder everything on their own. Um, taking just five minutes and kind of making that initial step and saying, I'm going to scale. I'm not going to fail. I'm ready to reach out for help is huge and free ups right there to support everybody we can hop on a call we can chat via email whatever is easiest for you know the listener um we're here for you and don't be afraid to take the next step because once you get everything going then it's all smooth sailing from there just repeat that Brittany. one thing i loved it what you just said i'm ready to scale i'm not ready to fail that's right i love that you should make a sure to that that's <laughs> awesome like I was saying, Brittany, I've had a great experience and I can tell like all the behind the scenes things that you're talking about today, I believe it. And I know that you're doing that because I've experienced it firsthand. Um, so something uh, that Dave actually brought to the table that he wanted and Dave, so I'm going to ask one of your questions, but um, I was just curious if you have anything, any upcoming projects, any new developments at free up, like anything that our listeners should know about or be excited about that you guys are bringing to the table. Yeah, for sure. Just what I mentioned about the managed services, we've been beta testing it. And uh, within the next couple of weeks, they're probably going to see a lot more coming out. Um, we've got a podcast that's coming out about it. Some of our marketing is really going to be pushing towards that branded material. Um, it's really for people who either need a lot of hand holding or need a lot of hands off. It's the managed service. So for people who are ready to scale up and, and need a little bit more um, a tutorial, great option for them. And then for people who've already been scaling, um, but just don't have the time to be interviewing people or managing their freelancers, it's another great service. So uh, just a fixed rate for for the managed services um, through FreeUp. And that's a huge, huge push that we're doing right now. So probably going to see a lot of info coming out about that over the next couple of weeks. Is it currently on the website or is it something? That, it is. It, people it's can find now. it okay. at freeup.net slash managed services. Um, but again, uh, just kind of been entry level for the last uh, couple of weeks and it's really going to be pushing through, um, over the next month. So. Cool. One thing I like too, Brittany, that you guys did when, when I was checking out free up is I think I just signed up and it's free to sign up for your, you know, your account, yeah. um, to, to, to just see what it's all about. And then I believe somebody emailed me or called me or set up a call just to say, Hey, we want to walk you through. So you know what you're looking for, how to navigate. Because I think that's one of the things that some of the competitors don't necessarily do is it's a platform, it's available, jump in and see what you think. And it's like, it could be the, the user experience that is prohibiting someone from wanting to use it again, where you guys had a little bit more of the red carpet, you know, white glove experience. So uh, again, um, really, really love that. And by the way, you said you got a podcast going on. I mean, I know a guy or two that... Uh, you know, <laughs> can produce that for you. We'll talk, we'll talk off camera. Well, I'd also love to talk to you um, about a free up uh, potential sponsorship, if that's something too, that, that you guys do. So just throwing it out there, we can talk off camera, but wanted love to it. get it up before I forget. Perfect. And I have one, actually one more question. So since I have you both on and I have both sides of the coin. So when you were going through that process, Mike, right? What, what, how long did it take? So from you to say, Hey, I need to hire somebody put the initial inquiry in to find and land your first freelancer. What, what, what was that a week? Was that a month? What did that look like for you? It was about two weeks from the um, time that I had the idea to go on free up, which was uh, shout out to my buddy, John Beebe. He's the one who mentioned it. 
And so I went on there and I just typed in, you know, I was looking for project managers. I was looking for audio and video editors um, and people who could edit social media content. And as Brittany mentioned earlier, some of those people double dip. They're good at two or three of those things. And um, which is really cool that a couple of the people on the team are doing multiple jobs. So day one was scoping it out. Um, I literally, I, I just put a, like the ad, I guess you can call it old school would be like the ad in the newspaper. But I put um, that social chameleon is hiring for um, these particular roles. And I think within the next 24 to 48 hours, I had 12 to 15 submissions and they all were legitimate. Like Brittany said, where it's people who've been working in the industry three plus years and they all had portfolios, anything I requested, Hey, can you send me this particular thing in your portfolio? I want to review came back really quick and easy. Um, you know, some of the, the, the challenges might be based on the fact that not everybody on there is in the U S so, uh, you know, I got someone on the team in Pakistan. We got two people in the Philippines. Um, I have someone that I hired in a different situation, not on free up that's in Nepal, pretty cool. And we got um, a couple of people in the, in the U S so, um, you know, actually free up has allowed me to go international with business and it's, I just mentioned it as a challenge, but something real quick is, you know, you get used to it. Like, uh, for example, Alex on my team, him and I were, were directly 12 hours off. So if I want to have a meeting with him at 8 PM, my time, I don't mind doing that. And it's eight o'clock his time in the morning. It's the first meeting of the day. It's not a big deal. It's actually kind of cool because he's, um, I give him a deadline of, of, uh, 8 PM, 8 AM, my time, he gets the whole day to do it. And I get to see it first thing in the morning. It's actually interesting. That's cool. But da Dave, within two weeks, I was set up. It was very, very quick. Um, the struggle I had wasn't anything to do with free up. It was all because I didn't have great, uh, like I, I created about 50 loom videos all between 30 seconds and five minutes, educating everybody on the team, the very specific things. My goal was. This is how Mike does it. I don't want to create clones of me. That would be a scary world. There's too many of me out there. But what I wanted them to do is this is how it's been done and then put your own flair on it. And I also mentioned, like Brittany said, is um, I let everybody know if you have a suggestion, your own flair, a way that you think it can look or feel better, let me know. And also, if anybody starts at the company on position X, if they want to grow into Y and Z, please let me know. And I want to see people grow into their greatness and not just be, oh, I hired you as an audio only guy. So you're going to live and die there for the next X amount of years. It's like, no, that's all. Awesome. got other talents. Yeah. So, yep. so, so, so I gave you the five minute answer, but within a couple of weeks and probably shorter than that, if somebody had their, their crap together, um, they could, they could done it. And within five business days, I'd say. Awesome. Yeah. You know, there was something else, um, uh, that we wanted to get to Dave. Um, I don't know if you had it in your notes or not. Um, we talked about the projects. Um, is there anything Brittany, you know, it, it's maybe not necessarily free up. I think we did a great job explaining the service and, and what goes behind it, but for your own, um, story, you know, so like what's next in, in your journey, you're the COO, it's a great position to have, but do you see yourself getting back to the bus or having any other, you know, entrepreneurial journeys of your own, you know, like Dave and I have so many ideas. We're always talking about starting a new business, but is there something that comes to mind for you? So it's, it's funny, just my trajectory with NextNet Media as a whole, um, it's been, it's not really linear. It's sort of like the big bang. It's sort of expanding, um, just sort of circularly around me. And the way that, you know, uh, things are going with just the brands in general, a lot of my role is sort of getting peppered into the other brands, like the Hoth, like iWriter, like Copymatic. Um, we, we also, uh, our sister companies with LinkBuilder.io uh, and Authority Builders. So really that's sort of where I'm going is just not, not so much only being um, a part of FreeUp, but a part of all of those other brands, which is just great holistically for our clients. So you know, we can offer support. If we can't do it at FreeUp, one of our sister companies can. So that's really where I'm growing. And I like that. I, I think that for a lot of people who are go-getters or interested in, in learning more, having uh, the space to do that and sort of, you know, still stay within the same company um, and not necessarily move linearly, but just 
expand is is a really cool concept. So that's that's where I'm at with it. It's awesome. I, I see that happening already. I mean, free up. Uh, I'm sure they're grateful to have you because you can grow with them. They can grow with you. And there's going to be so many new opportunities. Something that I wanted to um, hit on too before we wrap up is AI. So you mentioned Google, that there's something new with Google coming up, um, like an update. I personally use Monica, which is a Google product. Have you ever used that yet? I don't personally use it, no, but I know of, you know, of it. And it's our it's chat GPT based, right? Yeah. Um, Dave, I don't know if you've used it. Not, I was just going to ask you, what not is Monica? Street. Yeah. Yeah. So Monica, it's kind of interesting that it has, a, you know, a Where name. did you meet her, Mike? Where did I meet Monica? <laughs> um, yeah. No, honestly, the way my our team talks about Monica, literally, if you were listening in, you'd think that there's a woman that works for a company named Monica. But um, I use it for a couple of different ways, and it's really incredible. But as you said earlier, it's, it's not replacing anybody on our team's job. So when people say, oh, ChatGPT, it's going to replace jobs. It's not going to replace your job. What it's going to do is replace chat GPT used by another human. It's going to replace your job if you're not using it. Because 100 years ago, 120 years ago, um, if you needed to get around town quickly and you were still doing it with horse and buggy or even a bicycle, right? And then your neighbor gets the first Model T and he can get there and back in 20 minutes and you're taking four hours. Well, it's the same idea. It's just the technology is allowing you to use it and be quicker. It used to take me hours to write copy for emails, show notes, the creative process between a unique title for every podcast episode. And now what we do is we take the transcript for an entire episode. We give it to Monica and we say, give us five title suggestions that are engaging. You got to tell it exactly what you're looking for. Um, write a social media post that's engaging that hits on XYZ and she'll do that. Um, and, and there's so many different things like um, the YouTube, another AI component um, through Descript, which is a, we're, we're name dropping a lot of companies. I mean, we should be uh, talking to our attorneys, Dave. But um, uh, Descript has another AI service in there, Brittany, that you may be interested for your podcast, where when you ask it to do the YouTube uh, description, it actually gives you the YouTube chapter titles. Now, here's a direct example. Two years ago, I had people on our team that got paid to watch YouTube videos and write uh, chapter titles. That was their job. They'd watch the thing and they would come up with creative titles. Now, uh, AI does it as part of our process. And here's the deal. It's not always perfect, like you said. So our team is looking at it and going, eh, that choice of word is, is kind of a little bit bland. Why don't we spice it up with this or... This is mic'd up. It's got a little bit more of a fun backbone to it. So you yeah. want it to be in your language. But the idea is getting there took was 96% faster. You know, so yeah. Is there um, any last words you'd like to say to our audience? Uh, anybody who's looking to start a company, start a freelancing gig, make a little extra scratch to for their family? Words of encouragement. Yeah, 100%. Um, nothing beats free. And for your listeners, if they head over to freeuppod.com, we've got $50 in credits waiting for them for their first hire. So you hire an entry-level freelancer, that's 10 hours of work and no, no harm, no foul, nothing out of your pocket. So freeuppod.com will get them their credits and a lot of other uh, getting started resources as well for them. Wow. Jump at that. I mean, that, that's incredible. Yeah. Yep. Hey, learned a lot from you today, Brittany. Um, I feel like we're going to be doing some cool things together and I'd love to keep you in our, uh, in our sphere here. Um, Dave, anything you wanted to say before we jump off? No, I just want to say, uh, Brittany really appreciate the time. Grateful for the time. Uh, super excited to watch your journey. Um, anyone that I'd say that gets, gets into Mike and I's stratosphere, we always look out for each other and make sure that, that everyone's growing. And, and again, just, is grateful. So appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. And I'm going to share with the team that I had you on today. I think it's going to be a little feather in my cap. Oh yeah. <laughs> Talk to the COO of that company that, that you, that you came to social chameleon from. Um, and before we wrap up, I just want to let everybody know there's a couple other uh, sponsors that we, we're going to give some love to navigator bookkeeping is actually the bookkeeping services that we use at social chameleon check out um, in the, in our show notes, we have a link to their website. You'll be working with Nate and his team. They've been working with us for three years. There's, there's nobody I'd uh, that I'd rather have working on our books for us. And of course, Social Chameleon, podcasting done for you. Transform your podcast. Go to socialchameleon.us. Brittany, I'm grateful for you. 
I don't have my mug with me. I normally have my mug that says be great and be grateful. So I'm going to, we're going to pretend I have it. I'm grateful for your time today, your energy, you're amazing. And I love what you're doing and cheers to your continued success. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah.